National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham, where tonight's action will decide who will join Audrey Garland and Adam Stretton in our grand final of Gladiators 1997. And the winners of that final will each drive off with one of these amazing top of the range sports cabriolets and £1,000. The runners up will receive £1,000 to spend on a dream holiday on the Paradise Island of the Camors. meet our semi-finalists tonight. They are Wendy Familietti and Julie Hall. A warm welcome back again, Wendy. What on earth must your three daughters be thinking of at the moment? Um, I, I don't think they're really thinking too much about the gladiators. They just wonder where their mum's been recently. <laughs> and of course, your whole family's been a great support to you up till now. And now things are really getting quite serious because once we get to semi-final stage, you're battling for a place in the final. So how does that make you feel? I, I do feel very nervous, I have to admit, but I'm very pleased with everything that's happened so far. And I just want to put on a good show for the family especially. Well, I'm sure you will. And uh, are you optimistic about your chances tonight? Uh, or should I not even be asking? <laughs> no, I have to be optimistic. I mean, deep down, I feel very nervous, but um, I'll, I'll do my best. That's what we like to hear. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Wendy Familietti. Julie, have you secretly thought about winning Gladiators this year? Yes. Yes, I have. <laughs> I don't think I will, but I'll try. <laughs> what have you been doing since the last time we saw you? Trying to get some sleep. I can't get to sleep. I've had three sleepless nights. Thinking about? Yeah, I'm, I'm nervous. Ooh. I'm nervous. OK. Just remind us a little bit about what you do and where you come from. I work for my father in our family funeral directing business in Southwind in Nottinghamshire. And uh, you've got a few mad supporters along with you. Yes, crazy. All of them. <laughs> well, they're waving frantically. They're wishing you good luck like the rest of us are. Let's hear it for Julie. Well, we've met the girls. Now it's time to meet the guys. Tonight they are Piers Bryan and Gordon James. What is it? What is it? It's my new protective helmet for Gauntlet. I'm telling you what, you're going to need more than a bit of plastic to protect you in Gauntlet, and you know that. I know, it's well, it's in my dreams, really. It's just, it's a bit of humour to sort of uh, soften me up for Gauntlet, because uh, when you've got that at the end of the show, it does tend to worry you a little bit. Just a little bit. Are you worried at all about um, things now? Because they are getting a lot more serious. You know, you stand the chance of coming back in the final, and you know, there's prizes at stake and honour and pride. Millions of people watching at home, thousands of people here don't mean to put the pressure on, but how do you feel? Yeah, it's getting slightly more serious now. Uh, Semi final time. Um, everyone's out here to do their best. Me too, obviously. Um, no predictions, just uh, get out there, move as fast as I can. Avoid as many gladiators as possible, especially the real big whopper doogee ones, and wear my crash helmet whenever I can. Well, it certainly improves your looks, Piers. Let's hear it for Piers Bryant. <laughs> well, Gordon, I, I did have a few questions lined up for you, but I really don't know what to say. What's going on with this <laughs> this makeup? Hey, 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 just calm down, just calm down. All right there, Jezza. Everything's going all right, I'm going all right, I'm going to give them gladiators a good whopping when I get there, I tell you. Going to give them a good going over. All right there, Birkenhead. All right there. Hey, don't go, do the goal, ah. Hey. Do you like me trainees? Do you like me trainees? I'll tell you what, I think it's a good job you got this disguise on. Because <laughs> the gladiators are going to be after you. Just remind us where you come from and what you do. I'm Gordon James. Oh. I'm from Birkenhead on the Wirral. And I'm a systems engineer at Vertex in Warrington. Uh, the last couple of times we've seen you, you've had a smile on your face. You've really enjoyed yourself. Yeah. And I suppose you're looking forward to it tonight. Every time I come out here, the cold crowd gives me a, a real big buzz and I just can't get enough of it. OK, I'm sure you're going to get enough of the gladiators this evening. Let's hear it for Gordon! Well, the girls are now ready for their first event, so let the games begin. 
first female contender on tightrope is Wendy. And she's facing Siren. Over to John Anderson. Contender! then slide them down the tightrope, a severe opening test of strength and stamina. Ten points if Wendy wins the race, the net plunge if she comes second. Siren screams into the lead, smacks the down button and hooks up with a slide to victory. Siren down and it looks like Wendy's out, aiming to impact on the detonator. And sparks fly and so does Wendy. Disappointment all round, not the best start for her in this crucial semi-final. Never been on the tightrope before and won't be looking forward to it again. Siren, knees up, feet first, explosive start for her, explosive finish for Wendy. Our second female contender is Julie! And she's up against gold! In this case, all that glistens is certainly gold. The highly prized asset to the Gladiator squad stands 182 and weighs 76 kilos. So Julie will find herself 22 centimetres shorter and 21 kilos lighter. And being lighter is probably an advantage for the Southwell Undertaker. Gold knows that Julie defeated Siren in her last tightrope encounter. And it looks like Julie has the lead in the uphill struggle, but soon they'll be going downhill and fast. Julie hits the metalwork first, drops down to the platform, slaps the button and hooks up for the slide. With Gold well in her wake. Here comes Julie and Gold is going to be traded down. Julie wins it. Oh, ten points, a great exchange rate for Julie. Mom and friend Paddy thrilled with that opener. Way ahead, sure-footed finish from Julie. Used to digging, but not used to striking gold. Julie, you fairly flew up that tightrope. Uh, I don't know what I did, I just went. Gold wasn't going to catch me. I suppose it requires great strength in the arms, and from your job, doing a bit of the digging, you've yeah. got plenty of that. Yeah, it's helped. It helps me with my shoulders, yeah. Did you have an eye on gold whilst you were zipping out there? I thought she was ahead of me. I thought I could see her ahead of me. But happy days on the way down. Yes. <laughs> Did she get stuck up there? No. Gold, this girl's quick. Well, I tell you, I thought I was ahead, but when I dropped over the step up there, and I thought, she's got me. Well, that was a fatal mistake. Well done. OK, let's hear it for Gold and Julie. One event down in this semi-final, Wendy yet to score, Julie, 10. Next is the turn of the boys. First up is Piers. And he's up against Ace. The Ace is on the case. 185, 104 kilos and 132 round the chesty bits. From his stats, Piers appears to be 2 centimetres taller and 23 kilos lighter. Three, two, one. It's a good push-off from Piers, gets momentum. What is he doing? Like a puppet with its strings cut, recovers, and looks like he's still got the lead because Ace was all over the place. Hits the change of a platform first, needs to detach, does so, presses the go button and hooks up for the slide. But incredible speed from Ace, back on level terms. Who's for the plunge? Oh, Piers, just a bootlace away from 10 points, stitched up like a kipper for his trouble. And the Piers fans there seem to have brought their own G-force. Ace with a supercharged turnaround at the top, legs up and wins it superbly. You can't get much closer than that. No, well, the, at the end, yeah, but in the middle I just uh, lost my hands a little bit, got a bit twisted and unfortunately blew it. <laughs> but but I, knew, I know how fast he is, so it was all or nothing and... Uh, unfortunately nothing this time. <laughs> Ace, he too, he drove you very close there. He did. I knew Piers was going to be fast, that's why he's in the semi-final. And I was in trouble a couple of times up there on the rope. I started to spin for some reason. But I pulled it back at the end uh, and I'm happy with that. True sign of a gladiator. Let's hear it for Piers and Ace. Well, the support is incredible. Next up, it's Gordon. And he's facing Hunter. Over to John Anderson. Contender. Well, 
while Gordon has never been hitched up to the tightrope before in competition, Hunter already a past master, immediately stamping his mark on this contest. He's been faultless all season. And nothing ropey about this performance. Top of the hill Hunter slipping away from Gordon, and so are the points. Hunter enjoying every second of this. Downloads the computer operator into the net. No points. And Dot, his mum, is distraught. Hoped he'd steal it, but she hadn't figured on the Hunter. Well, brilliant performance from the highly popular Glad. Leads with his feet so fast he even caught the fireworks napping. Hunter, very big smile on your face. You seem to enjoy that. I tell you what, uh, Jeremy, the hardest bit about that game is actually getting up that cargo net to get pinned on in the first place. I was a bit tired before I even started, but uh, yeah, I got a good kick off. Uh, I think I have to wear sunglasses next time because the lights are so bright in this arena. All I could see was like brightness, but uh, good game, enjoyed it. Well done. Gordon, you're up against one of our best gladiators there. It was yeah. never going to be easy. Jeremy, when you get Hunter, your heart sinks because, man, he's the best at everything. And all credit to the guy, he's the best of the best. Well, you gave it your best shot. Thanks. Let's hear it for Gordon and Hunter. <laughs> Generous praise from Gordon. Everyone loves the Hunter. One event gone, men scores nil-nil. Time out to go training with the gladiators. Right, rock climbing, beautiful place, beautiful sport, fantastic games. Rock climbing is a very easy sport if you follow certain rules. If not, it's dangerous. So, you must absolutely think always about the safety. Helmet, the rope, you must check the rope, always. You never have to walk on. You must check your equipment. This is your insurance. But you must also check your friends. Alone, you can't do rock climbing. You must think solidarity. Okay? It's a very easy game, very easy sport. But think always safety. So, let's go! We now move into our next event. And standing at the foot of the wall is Wendy! She's going to be chased by Siren! Also getting ready to climb, it's Julie! She's going to be hotly pursued by Lightning! Woo! Wendy may not look it, but she's thrilled to be here. My last show was um, a dream of a show for me because everything went better than I could have hoped for. It was nice for my family to have um, some points to cheer this time because I didn't really get any in my first show. Um, it was a close show, it was exciting on the Eliminator and I, I really did do better than I could have hoped for. Contenders, you will go on my first whistle. Gladiators, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Last time on the wall, Wendy escaped the rocket to win and score 10. Julie's mum, Chris, urging her up. She knows the girls only have a seven-second head start over the Glads in a semi-final. Siren against Wendy, Lightning against Julie, and Wendy's sister sounding off. And it looks like no way Wendy's coming off. Lightning hot on Julie's heels. Julie scored 10 last time. She scaled the wall, but there's no guarantee this will be a repeat performance. Lightning. Oh, and she grabs her gusset. Julie heaved from the rock face, but Siren won't catch Wendy. Ten points for the mother of three. And what a mum they've got. They can't believe it. Wendy, by hook or by crook, you were going to get out there. I'm oh, sorry, oh, I'm so pleased. I needed those, I needed those points, I'm so pleased. Was it nerve-wracking, having the gladiators just behind you? Very, as, as she, she got my foot as well. I thought, oh no, she's going to get me. And I just gave a little tug and luckily she didn't get me again. Well, as hard as Siren tried, she couldn't get you. Wendy, you scored 10 points! Well, that evens it up again. Two events gone in the ladies' semi-final. 10-10 the score. So we now move into the men's event with Piers. And he's going to be chased by the Wolfman. Also getting ready to climb, it's Gordon. He's going to be followed by Cobra. Over to John Anderson. Contenders, 
you will go on my first whistle. Gladiators, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Gordon in blue lost out to Ace in his heat and looks to have lost his sense of defection already. Mum and Dad got there, Eric can't believe it. This is going to be an easy night's work for Cobra. Can't think why he's running to the wall, just needs half a stretch to finish it for Gordon. Oh, it'll be worth the rigmarole of getting harnessed up. Well, no wonder he's got the ump. And Wolf crawling all over Piers. Oh, and Wolf's gone! Wolf off the wall, never happy with heights, always prepared to have a go, comes badly unstuck in this event, and Piers can't believe his luck. Up and over the top, ten points to Piers, courtesy of the benevolent Wolf. Yes. Piers will be pleased to know that the Wolf man fell off the wall. Hey, Wolfie! <laughs> How do you like that, mate? How do you like that? I'll tell you what, I knew he was coming, but again, I smelt him, and I just thought, oh, I can't have that smell near me. Got to keep going. You're also going to take great pleasure because Piers has scored 10 points! Well, huge congratulations to Piers, but it looked to me as if you were almost touching his foot. <laughs> I could smell his fear, I was that close. <laughs> but then, once you've come off the wall, I mean, you don't stand a chance. It's a 50-50 chance. I lunged at his leg and I didn't make it. I'll have him next time. Oh, that's something to look forward to. Huge congratulations. That was an absolutely superb climb, Cobra. Uh, well, I don't deserve it because he slipped, so I don't really deserve the, uh, the kudos of that. Oh, kudos, that's a big word. That's a long word, and don't put yourself down, love. A real shame for you. Uh, I tried to go for a big leap at the start. I didn't make the, gri the grip I wanted to, and the man, Cobra, struck immediately. Well, the good news is there's a few more events to go. Let's hear it for Gordon, Cobra and the Wolfman. Drama on the wall. Cobra still talking, Wolf still smiling. After two events, Piers climbs to ten, Gordon sticks on zero. So two events down, but plenty more semi-final action after the break. Join us here on Gladiators. Welcome back to the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham, where the excitement for our semi-final is at fever pitch. And now we're ready to kick off with our next event. Swing shot. Our first female contender on swing shot is Wendy. And Julie. And they'll be facing Lightning and Rebel. Both Lightning and Rebel giving us their rendition of the theme from Doctor Who there. Wendy swung out Let once before and scored just the once. Three, two, one. It's a semi-final, so swing out, sisters. Julie on a flyer. First time on swing shot, goes high, takes a yellow for one point. Baskets it up. Glad poise. Julie, grim determination, bounces high. Oh, interception from Rebel. Best friend Kim with her husband, Paddy. They'll be nervous wrecks by the end of the night. One point for a yellow, two for a blue, and three for a red. You knew that. Wendy, good block by Lightning. And Wendy recovers well. Half a minute remaining, 1-0 to Julie. Here she comes, reaches up, takes a blue. Rebel suddenly found wanting in this event. Julie's fans content. Wendy empty-handed. Julie just hanging about. With confidence, she's got the measure of the Rebel. Still, there's no need to moon at her. Lightning away. Effectively marked Wendy out of this swing shot event. Julie baskets her blue. That takes her total to three. Final swing, here she comes. Takes another blue, but she'll be out of time. No, under the wire. And into the basket. Fantastic finish from Julie Hall. Well, thin pickings on the pole. Julie aims high for the blue. Takes it with ease, but her biggest enemy is the clock. But look at this superb recoil. Straight up, straight in. The result of the girls' swing shot. Wendy, no points. But Julie, five points! Let's hear it for our Yeah, but Rebels had better days on swing shot. After three events, Wendy 10, Julie 15. Next up, it's Piers! And Gordon! And they'll be facing Hunter and Wolf! Over to John Anderson. 
Well, I don't know who Wolf was blowing a kiss to, but let's hope he's still in a good mood after this. Piers also under the impression it's a face-pulling contest. Now even Hunter's having a go. Gordon jumps to it, he and Piers have never swung before. Piers is up first to snatch a blue. Yellow's rained down, but that blue's going in Piers' basket. Hunter struggling with his recoil. Piers takes advantage of the space, snaffles a red. Top of the tree, three points. Splendid swinging from Piers, doing superbly against the Hunter. Just needs to register the points. Back on the platform to put the red where it belongs. Brings his score to five. And Gordon, the arena almost to himself, plenty of time to pick a yellow, and a mid-air collision between Gordon and Piers. Gordon still has the yellow, Hunter not his usual fluent self in this swing shot, Gordon makes a point. Piers has lost his momentum following the pile-up, and Gordon with the leap, looks to have space, couldn't take advantage, time running down, slow recovery from Gordon. And Hunter determined to make it a good one. 5-1 to Piers, and it looks like it's going to stay that way. Piers with one more crack at the cylinder. Incredible height. Hunter there to intimidate, but that's about it. John Anderson's horn calls it a day on this swing shot. Just need to confirm Piers is five and Gordon's one. And Piers' mum, Rosemary, and girlfriend Meg not about to grumble at that. The result of the boys' swing shot are Gordon scores one point. Piers, five points! And let's hear from our gladiators, Hunter and Wolf! Tough stuff, but a place in the final is at stake. After three events, Piers has 15, Gordon won. Fancy another quick sunshine break? Cycling is a great form of exercise because it really works your leg muscles and your cardiovascular system. Plus, you get a chance to see some of the beautiful countryside here in Mauritius. But like any form of exercise equipment, you must make sure it's properly maintained. Check your tyre pressures. Check the tension of the chain. And also, check that your lights work, especially at night time. If you don't want an accident, make sure your brakes are tight. Oh! Oh! And most importantly of oh! all, don't forget to put your saddle on. Oh! And first up in the women's event, it's Wendy! She's going to be facing Falcon! Falcon, with a 100% record of the dueling platforms, a real wham-bam thank you, ma'am. Weights and measures-wise, here's how she looks. 170 and 67. Uh, Wendy Famiglietti, two centimetres shorter and nine kilos lighter. This is Wendy's first time on the pugil perch, and she's not going to get it easy from Falcon. For KOing, the bird of prey, five if she stays the distance. Falcon rattling Wendy's cage, a real headbanger. Wendy's wobbling and Falcon puts an end to her misery. Another one bites the dust at the hand of the Falcon. Unimpressed, knows she could have done with a boost to her point situation. What did you say, love? I've got a headache. I bet you have. This is the event that everybody <laughs> fears. And uh, she really did give you a good beating. Oh, that's... Oh, I've never been hit so hard in my life. I thought, I'm, I've got to try and stay up here. I've got to try, my legs just went, and then she finished me off with a massive blow. And all. Oh, well, listen, go off and have a little Panadol yeah. or something. I mean, all credit to you. That was absolutely fantastic. You're just me, mint me over. Just went for the head, Ulrika, actually. Put her off balance, and then got her off. But well done. What a nasty, nasty girl you are. No, she's not. Let's hear it for Falcon and for Wendy. She's going to be facing Vogue. Julie undaunted on the duel, as she told me earlier. One of my events today is the duel, and I'm quite looking forward to it, because I'm used to having a shovel in my hand, and I'm used to getting hit on the head with lumps of soil that keep falling back into the grave. So to me, it's going to be home from home. Julie will be looking to lay out the Vogue. The Undertaker is used to boxing Vogue with a quiet season so far, looking to make up for it here. 
Oh, Julia refuses to be nailed, trying to get a handle on this event. And Vogel over the shot. Julie digging her way out of trouble. She's not going 12 feet down. Seems to have coped with the best that Vogue can throw at her. The contender from Nottinghamshire ties Vogue up in knots. Vogue just cannot put the lid on it. Durable dueling from Julie. She's going the distance. Soaks up the punishment. Knows that even the best of Vogue won't shift her. Five points. Chris and Paddy elated. At the end, when Vogue let rip with a... Higgins, Julie held on to her balance and her points. I'll start with you, Vogue. I mean, you looked incredibly strong up there, but she was, she was giving very, very good. I don't know how she managed to stay up there because I was really going for it up there, I hope to say. Um, I must have got about at least 15, 20 blows on her head and she wasn't going anywhere. She was very, very stable up there. You certainly were. I mean, for a reasonably little girl you did so well staying up there because she looked incredibly strong and i thought well she'll have her off in a minute in a minute in a minute in a minute and you keep staying there like i said it's home from home i'm used to having a shovel in my hand and i'm used to getting hit on the head with lumps of soil so <laughs> all right let's bring john anderson in and find out what the score was at the very end of that the rules are simple if the contender is still there at the end of the game Five points. Well done, That's Julie. right. The rules have been clear for so long, they've become simple. And after four events, Wendy stays on 10. Julie goes up to 20. Next event. Now it's the turn of the boys. First up, it's Piers. And he's up against Khan. Well, Piers will have his work cut out against the Colossus, that is Khan. Piers with a substantial lead, he'll be looking to capitalise on that now. Khan almost as big as the sumo ball itself, didn't have time to shave this morning, he was so busy training in the gym. As the guys take the strain, let's hear why Piers is looking less confident than you'd expect. The game's not really looking forward to, really, it's just sumo ball. Haven't had an awful lot of practice on it. Uh, it's not really, me and her sumo haven't really uh, bonded very well together at the moment, so we'll see. Uh, give it my best shot, shot again, and uh, we'll sort of go from there. Keep fingers crossed, maybe I can stay on the platform. Three, two, one! Khan has 30 seconds to push Piers off the platform. Piers will try and stay the distance, but he's gone already. <laughs> His worst fear is completely justified, over the edge and out of the points. Big grin from Meg. Khan, with his massive combination of weight and strength, just leaned into the ball and Piers was swung out of it. No hanging about from the Khan. Next up, it's Gordon. And he's facing Rhino. And Rhino, trying to look like Elvis. He's a magnificent gladiator, stats to make Gordon's blood run cold. 172 tall, 112 kilos of solid muscle and a chest that sticks out to the tune of 132 centimetres. Gordon, 8 centimetres taller, but 33 kilos lighter. It's time to strain. Rhino ready to shoulder the burden. Birkenhead's Gordon knows he'll get no mercy. Sorry, I mean mercy. And Rhino looking to push Gordon's weight around. Gordon on the lip of the platform. Oh, he's getting out of there. Launched into oblivion by the fearsome rhinoceros. And Gordon's mum, Dot, continues her despair. Piers fans less charitable about that result. Gordon, you tried, but you're giving away a little bit of weight there. You're just, just trying to resist the big guy, you know, it's, it's quite hard. Every game, everyone watching, every game is so difficult to master. And then you've got these big guys <laughs> giving it to you, you know, it's... It's always difficult and yeah, it's against the odds, but I, I gave it my best try. Was your uh, tactics to keep Moog going round and round or maybe even try and push Rhino yourself? Well, <laughs> that's, you're not going to push this guy, but maybe spin, use my footwork. I'm obviously probably more nimble than him, or I like to think I am. But uh, the guy got the better of me. He certainly did, Rhino, you're the man. You did a good job out there. Well, I tried. What makes it harder is that he's a nice guy. And, but, you know, you, from the time that whistle goes, you've got to lock in and you've got to do what you've got to do. Well, well you Gordon. certainly did it. Let's hear it for Rhino and Gordon. Rhino, the consummate professional, denies Gordon the points. After four events in the men's, Pierce stays on 15, Gordon on one. Just time for a quick burst of sunshine. This is the leg extension. This exercises the big muscles on the front of the thighs. These are the most powerful muscles in the body and you have to work very hard with them. But, like all these machines, they have to be handled with care. But for Wolf, 
Excelling on the pyramids and the sumo ball is very important, and so these muscles have to be developed and have to be worked hard. This is my one chance now to get even with them. Do another thousand! No problem. <laughs> to run the gauntlet, it's Wendy! And tonight, she faces Rio! Rebel! Vogue! Falcon! And Rocket! Over to John Anderson. Contender! Wendy barged away through the barriers in her quarter-final gauntlet to score five points. Rio putting the block on any early progress. But a sneaky spin-out from Wendy. Rebel tries to pad her away, but Wendy, so nimble, rolls with the blows. Scampers out of trouble and into Vogue. Vogue working that ramrod with both hands, but can't hold Wendy. Into Falcon. Falcon with the pads. Wendy's too slippery to contain. Rocket with the final barrier. Can Wendy get to the finish for five? Oh, driving hard. The Rockets save the day for the Glads. Oh, very bad luck, Wendy. Her sister desperately frustrated. Well, Wendy, a lot of them giving you trouble there, but I think what you expected least was Rocket at the end. I mean, she really went for you. Yeah. Oh, dear. And Rio at the beginning just couldn't get past her. I was trying to roll this way, roll that way. Anything, but... Well, as you know, you heard the, the buzzer go and yeah. you didn't pick up any uh, points on this occasion, but we'll let you go off and get focused for the Eliminator. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Wendy! <laughs> Next up against the Dream Team, it's Julie! Over to John Anderson. Contender! Julie's been a yellow peril for the Glads this season, but absolutely lambasted by Rio. What a stunning impact. It's a real rough house down there with Rio. Julie almost balancing on top of the wall to get past Rio. Rebels next, and she's on her back again. Julie being knocked from pillar to post. Never run the gauntlet before, and probably never wants to run it again. Rebel giving nothing away except serious punishment with those power pads. Forget the points. The only thing Julie's going to walk away with is a ringing in her ears. Rebel wields the pads without mercy. Julie's time is up, but she's gamely survived the toughest women's gauntlet I've seen in well, a long time. Julie, I mean, Rio knocked you out of the gauntlet to start with. <laughs> Why? And then, uh, what were you on? Listen, this girl's a tough cookie, but I was here to show her that she may deal with the underworld, but she has to deal with us first. We were ready for her. Wow! No points on this occasion, but let's hear it for Julie! And Julie took a mullering, but in a way flattered by Rebel. Let's hope it's not knocked the stuffing out of her for the Eliminator to come. At least she's still smiling. <laughs> she's a happy bunny. After five events in this semi-final, the girls' scores wind up like this. Wendy 10, Julie 20. Piers scored five at the expense of the Glads in Gauntlet. Rhino determined that won't be happening again. Rhino making some very unpleasant noises as Piers piles into the Hunter. Hunter dispenses double-handed Piers pressure. Into Ace. Oh, but Ace in trouble. Ace can't hold him. Three down, two to go. Khan next to steam him with the pads. Fast feet from Piers, but he can't escape the Khan. Khan invited to release his man. Final hurdle is Cobra. 
Can he beat the 30 seconds cutoff point? He's driving for home. Is he there? Will his legs over? Oh, a whisker away from five points. Meg comforting Rosemary there. That's certainly no love tunnel, is it? No. This is uh, one rough game, and uh, God, don't I love it? Not. You were literally, you know, a second or a split second before picking up a few points, possibly. I know, I know. It's one of those games you just keep plugging away, but five of them, you know, one, you get by, two, you get smashed, three, four, I've run out of breath. <laughs> Let's hear it for Piers. He's a tough cookie, as Piers drove Cobra hard, trying for those points. Could have been covered in glory. Instead, he was covered in bruises, just in the gauntlet and out of time. up against the mean machine it's Gordon and Gordon knows what he's got to do as he told me this afternoon today gauntlet's going to be a very hard event um, Rhino's looking good they're all looking big and hard and they're strong men Gordon pulled five points from the gauntlet last time. He's got to push five lads aside to do it again now. Rounds the Rhino into Hunter, driving him back to where he came from. Oh, hello. Over and out. Such a big bang. Hunter's outside with him. Older brother Steve concerned. Well, Gordon caught Rhino napping, attacked Hunter. Hunter resisted the challenge, drove him back hard and high. There are 22 seconds remaining. Three, two, one. Gordon's next obstacle is Ace. Ace working the ramrod, but Gordon's up to it and round it. Oh, it's Khan with the pads. The 10 points are slipping away. Oh, it's Cobra next. He flattens Gordon, rough with that ramrod. And Gordon gets a taste of the outside world again. Can he slip Cobra for five? Oh, yes, he can. He's there and he can't believe it. Mum and Dad on the verge of hysteria. to the Eliminator, you're in desperate need of some points. Man, I shook the world! You certainly did, and without any further ado, let's bring in Eugene and find out what your time was. Gordon dragged himself across the line in 26 seconds. Five points! Well done! And let's hear it for our gladiators, Cobra, Khan, Ace, Hunter, Rhino. Rhino leads the guys away. Their work done for another week and the arena rises to acclaim Gordon. Go on, girl, give him some. After five grueling events, Piers finishes up with 15, Gordon with six. There are only two places remaining in our final. We have four contenders. The Eliminator will decide. Join us after the break for more action here on The Gladiators. Welcome back to the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham where it's eliminator time. Now in the women's event, Julie's on 20 points, Wendy's on 10 points. That's a 10 point difference giving Julie a five second head start. Over to Jeremy. Julie, the gauntlet hasn't taken too much out of you, has it? Uh, yeah, I'm making a bit from it. My back. I'll be right. Well, this is the last one. You're definitely going to yeah, go for it. it. I'm going to go for it, but I'd rather be chasing. <laughs> Wendy, you're in the chasing position. Five seconds. You're going to be able to catch that up? Oh, obviously, I hope to. Um, I'm going to try my darn hardest. Um, five seconds is, is a fair time, but I'll give it everything I've got. That's all you can do. Good luck to both of you. Over to the start. Over to John Anderson. Julie, you will go on my first whistle. Wendy, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, 
One. Julie Hall from Southwell sets off for a place in the final, still rattling from that diabolical pounding she took in the gauntlet. Wendy Famiglietti from Chingford begins her chase. Wendy looking agile and full of running. Julie bounces up to the net. Wendy trips on the last hurdle. Julie tops it off with a big drop down. Wendy's sister urging her up. Julie finishing the net. Her fastest eliminator timed at a minute 57. Wendy's at 137. Rope for Julie. Struggling with her feet and Wendy also on the rope. Julie's friend Kim sees the lead wiped out and Wendy on terms. The rope was Julie's downfall. Hand that a next. The girls started neck and neck. Five seconds can disappear in a flash. Wendy's sister out of her chair. Still together, run for run. The trapeze will swing them across the valley of death to the cargo net. Wendy with the better swing. But Julie pulls it back again. Julie's mum, Chris, can't believe what she's seeing. Wendy leads on the net. Julie trying to match her. And Wendy makes the gantry first. Brothers Jeff and Steve beginning to like what they see. Wendy on the zip line to the floor. Julie can only watch it, all starting to slip away. Wendy splashes down. Julie hooks up for her ride. Here she comes onto the crash mat. Chris knows it's not over yet. Wendy on the seesaw, pivots it down, starts a second seesaw as Julie begins her first. A place in the final, tantalizingly beckons at the top of the hill from hell. Onto the travelator, she's got the power. Go on, girl. Yes, she finishes her final element in style and swings into the final. And sister Julie embraces brother Steve. Julie with one last mountain to climb. Incredible stamina from a remarkable young lady, Julie Hall. Wendy! I don't know what to say except for you've got to come back and do it all over again. I keep forgetting that bit. Oh. Oh. I kept thinking, don't make a mistake, take it easy, take it easy, and that's exactly what you did. Do you mind if I just check with my mum if it's all right if I stay a bit longer? Oh, let's do it now. Is it all right if she comes back, Mum? Yeah, I think the answer is yes. You've earned yourself in place in the final. You must be so excited. I, d I can't believe it. It's brilliant. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Wendy Familietti. Julie, that shows great sportsmanship, cheering uh, Wendy there. Even when you came through the finishing post there, you still had a smile on your face. I like Wendy. To I'm not ashamed of losing to Wendy. I lost it on the rope a bit. And that was it. <laughs> well, you've been an absolutely fantastic contender. We've really enjoyed having you on the show. Let's hear it for Julie! Time for celebrations before Wendy sorts out another lot of babysitting arrangements. Not a bad achievement for a mother of three. Julie, as Jezza said, she hasn't stopped smiling. The personification of the spirit of gladiators. Hug for mum. And Wendy's run not only lands her a place in the final, but her time of 1 minute 30.5 shatters the existing fastest eliminator record. Now it's the turn of the guys. The nine-point lead enjoyed by Piers converts to a four-and-a-half-second head start back to the arena. Well, Gordon, I guess at this stage you could almost wipe out everything that you've done so far tonight and just think ahead. Well, I'd like to erase the gauntlet from my memory totally, but I'm going to have to give it my best. Uh, I've got a 4.5 second deficit on Piers. I know he's going to go around that course real quick, uh, but I'm going to be behind him and hopefully in front of him at the end. Well, Piers, it's always a little bit more relaxing, isn't it, to stand there with a four and a half second head start? No, not at all, because I know that he's going to chase even harder. I know how fast he is, so let's just keep the fingers crossed, give it everything I've got and, uh, yeah, see how it goes. Well, we'll look forward to a brilliant eliminator. The best of luck to the two of you. See you both at the end. Over to John Anderson. Gordon's fans in fine voice. <laughs> Matched only by the cheers from Piers's people. But it's too much of a nail-biter for Meg to join in. Piers, you will go on my first whistle. Gordon, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Piers Bryant from Copthorne. A minute 13 was his quickest time over the eliminated course. Gordon James from Birkenhead. A minute 17, his personal best. Piers' dramatic drop as Gordon bounces onto the upside. Rosemary stunned. Meg's found her voice again. Piers up to the platform and the handbikes ahead. 
Gordon finishes his net. He has pumped the pedals. Gordon makes short work of the rope, but can't make a dent in that lead. All Gordon's family have their finger on the pulse. Piers, trapeze, brace for the agonising climb ahead. His contingent of fans begin to look confident as he digs into the net. It strips the stamina from every sinew of the body. Gordon joins him on the net, dot beside herself. Piers finishes his climb while Gordon's forced to continue enduring the pain. It zippers for Piers. He'll want to get this over and done with. Splashes down next to the seesaws. Mum Rosemary knows a place in the final is at hand, but first his feet need to be sure on the seesaw. Gordon's final approach splashes down, knows it isn't over until the papers burst, but Piers has got the measure of the seesaws. Oh, he's down, and one last burst to make the final of the Gladiators. No messing, he's there, and that's that. Rosemary and Meg can celebrate now, along with the rest of his fans. And Gordon gearing up for the final frontier. Good fast legs, plenty of strength, great guy, and a terrific runner-up. Mum and Dad, Dot and Eric want him to get it finished. Gordon's race is run. Piers, love, the only reason I want you to come back is because your people provided me with such a wonderful banner in the audience. Apart from the hard work that you've put in tonight, you must be so excited. Yeah, I am. I, that eliminator got hard then. Gordon, it took it out of me a bit. But thank you to A. Gordon for being such a good contender with me. He's a great guy. B to the fans out there, because they've been brilliant, all of you. They absolutely have, and I have some good news too, that you ran a very, very fast eliminator indeed. One minute and 12 seconds, so well done. Superb, thank you. I can't believe it, I'm thrilled. Yes! Well, you have a good rest, because you've got to come back and do it all over again. Thank Piers you. Bryan! Gordon, it's been a close run thing all evening, and the eliminator was no different. Oh, the guy flew. I was TN, I lost a little bit of steam. It was hard going. I was determined to get up the travel eight ten, the first attempt. I'd just like to say, anyone at home watching, if a guy who works at computers eight hours a day at the desk can get to the semi-finals of Glads, tomorrow, get on your bikes, get in the gym, get fit, get on gladiators and get yourself some fun. As it's a roller coaster ride. That's well said. You've been a tremendous sportsman. Thank Thanks for being on Gladiators. Let's hear it for Gordon! <laughs> Piers brings home the flowers and a place in the final. Gordon gave his best. That's all we demand on Gladiators. Condolences from Gordon's family. A smacker from Meg for Piers. In the £1,000 contest for the fastest men's eliminator, Piers was one second outside Adam Stretton's existing record. Well, with eliminators like that in the semis, I dread to think what the final's going to be like. But you know there's only one way of finding out. Join us next week for the grand final of Gladiators 1997. More action here on the Gladiators. For safety reasons, do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on Gladiators. Do it, do it, do it, do it.